Richard, 2012 was a really busy year for you. Las Vegas opened in early summer and three months ago Orlando was open. What do you think are the common threads between these new store openings? I think we picked up a lot of interesting things from our development in Las Vegas. One of the big things we did there, as we spoke earlier, was really nailed down what the passengers were all about. They're very specific. They're not all the same. We took that retail science, applied it to Las Vegas. The results have been astounding. They're still going strong. We took that and applied it here in Orlando. So the real common thread is build something around the, the people and the type of people that are coming into your shop. So, you know, you'll see later that this shop is not the same as Las Vegas. In fact, it's quite a bit different because the PAX profile is different. So I would say in terms of commonality, that is by far the biggest thing between the two. You've partnered here with DFAS. Uh, now, turnover in 2011 was something approaching 15 million US dollars, yet you're predicting turnover of something in excess of 200 million dollars um, over this seven year term. What do you think are the key elements that will help drive sales to deliver those numbers? I think the key element, again, comes back to design around the passenger profile. So when you look at the previous design, it was tired, there was a lack of investment. The first thing you're gonna get is a pop just from new design period, a new, a new structure. You're gonna get that right away. We got that. We also have the passenger profile built right into our design, which has already proven to give us big uplifts in sales and other properties. So we're on track in year one to do 22, 23 million, which is right on schedule with our projection of over 200 million. So, so far, so good. So John, what do you see as the principal benefits of securing a seven year concession deal? Peter, I think there's two key benefits to a seven year concession agreement. The first deals with capital improvements. It allows an operator to invest more in capital improvements and amortize that investment over a period of time, which is you know, quite reasonable. Secondly, it deals with staffing. By having a seven-year concession agreement, it allows you to attract and retain employees that are more qualified because they're a certainty of term. Phil, congratulations on such an excellent resale execution. Just how important is non airport revenue to the airport authority? It's extremely important to this airport. We've had a long-term strategy of trying to generate more non-aeronautical revenues because it makes uh, it more competitive for the airlines that serve this market and we've reached uh, on average about 70 percent. That's not the norm for most airports. It's uh, quite a bit less, sometimes 50-50, but uh, we're a unique destination here. We are uh, prideful of the Orlando experience and part of that is to give passengers the opportunity for a number of retail experiences. So what is the airport's current capacity level and just how important is it for you to drive more airline traffic through your doors? Well, it's more important for us to drive more airline traffic through our doors because the, the economic generators in this area, predominantly the leisure destinations, the theme parks, are, are investing in their properties, they're expanding, so there's going to be demand there. We want to provide the lift, work with their airline partners, and we're seeing some more business experience develop. Our job ultimately is to serve the demand in this market, and it's always been a, a tremendous leisure destination, and we're starting to see it become a, a business destination. So what you're effectively selling is really Orlando Incorporated rather than just the likes of Disney World, for example. Yes. But what they realize, in order to get the lift here, you have to have the business passenger as well as the leisure passenger. So we've, we cooperate with them to a large extent on how we market to the world. So how then do you see commercial growth for the airport in the coming years? How do you see it evolving here? Well, what we see is more and more uh, commercial opportunities, retail opportunities for passengers, giving them a number of different options. We also want to grow our 70% uh, to 100% aspirationally. That's going to be tough, but I think that's a good goal for us to have because that makes us very much more competitive in the aviation market. Um, so we have to develop revenues from something other than airline payments. Duty free is a good example of that. Um, being able to increase our international passengers and give them more and more options is, is a way that we think that we can achieve that aspirational goal. Well, this is quite a sizable store for a duty-free store based on what was previously here. I mean, do you see this as, as a pivotal to your income stream going forward? 
I think it's pivotal to our income stream because that gives us an opportunity to show that we can take a larger footprint and generate the revenue that's required and give more opportunities. This is unique because this is not only duty free, but it's duty paid. So we see some traffic coming in from domestic passengers as well, which is somewhat of a novel concept in the airport world. How would you best describe your business partnership with Nuance? Well, I think it's, it's in the beginning stages, but so far I think we've got a, a lot of good opportunities and we see a, a great opportunity to grow our business together, to, to serve our customers because we have the same customers. And once you can give that customer service, exceed the expectations of the customer, which is one of our strategic goals, then it's good for everybody. Andy, different location, different execution. Just walk us through this store as a passenger experiences it. Certainly, but let me start by first explaining the principles that we apply when we, when we start a store design process. So there are four key principles we use. One is creating a sense of place. Two is ease of customer navigation. Three is innovation. And four is clarity of offer. So when you look at the, the store as a customer, your first impressions are, first of all, you get to see everything inside the store. You walk at the front of the store, you can see MAC Cosmetics, you can see the cosmetics along the wall, you can see the fashion at the back of the store, whether that be Tag or uh, Toomey, um, and then you can see over to the liquor department. We also make the path through the store very clear. You can either go off to MAC, but then come back in, enter back into the fragrance area, walk through the store, back to the fashion, and then over to the liquor. And we did that purposely. This store, like many of our stores in the US, can service both duty-free and duty-paid customers. So in this case, we like to make sure that we put those items that the duty-paid customer, the domestic customer can buy, right at the front of the store. So that, because we don't always have international customers going through the store. Also talk about a sense of place. When the RFP came out for this airport, the airport was very clear in terms of the colors they wanted us to use, the kinds of palettes, and the connection with the geography of the area, really bringing the water and the resort feeling together. So when you look around the store, you can see that the colors we've chosen are in line with that. In addition to that, in the center of the store, we created this wonderful uh, piece of glass work that sits over our fragrance scent area. What is it exactly? Um, again, it's the colors. It ties back to colors that, that, we, that we've used to kind of create a feel and an, an atmosphere. And the reason the colors are so bold is that when you get to the front of the store, you're really drawn into it. And this is it's actually- It's a magnet, that's for sure. And this is where we run our uh, fragrance HPPs and our, our scent bar in this area. And then the last piece is really the innovation. We've brought in a scent bar, we've brought in a liquor tasting area to, uh, to find ways to, to engage the customer during their, uh, during their visit through the store. I mean, you crammed a lot in, it's only 5,000 square feet, but for a U.S. store, that's pretty sizable still, isn't it? It, it, it is a fair size store in the U.S., that's right. I mean, for us, it's, uh, it, it still ranks in our top sizing of stores. Um, and we did put a lot in. We put those brands in that were related to the customers that, or the passengers that we knew were flying through here, which are mainly British and Brazilians. So if you talk about the Brazilians as an example, we know that one of the big driving factors for their purchase in the cosmetic area is color cosmetics. So we, we managed to put in a 285 square foot MAC cosmetic counter at the front of the store. We also know that a big driver for them is fashion. And so as a result of that, we added some luxury fashion brands that weren't here before. Brands like Tag, Mont Blanc, Toomey, Longchamp, and plus we have a good offering of fragrances, again addressing both the Brazilian and the British. For the British customers, again, a lot of focus on the fragrance area and a lot of focus in the liquor area. So we put a lot of liquor inside the store. Um, tobacco is behind the cash desk. There we're trying to meet FDA regulations. I mean, as a major airport operator, you always seem to evolve your product. Nothing stands still with you guys. I mean, there were learnings from Las Vegas. There are clearly learnings from here. I mean, what do you think you're going to change in the coming months? In this store, I mean, one of the areas that we're actually going back to revisit because of the British customer is we're going to do something a little bit bigger with Jack Daniels. We think that there's an opportunity to kind of take the Jack Daniels shop and shop concept we had in Las Vegas and put that concept in here in a much smaller way, but we think there's an opportunity. It is, it is still a great souvenir item and our, our number one selling skew when it comes to the British passenger in the liquor area. So where do you go to from here, Richard? Do Las Vegas and Orlando effectively now represent a real blueprint for what the company's trying to achieve in North America? I think it does represent a blueprint. It's fluid, it's an evolution, 
But the elements of what we learned both in Las Vegas and Orlando, we're going to get a chance to apply in Toronto in the coming year. So we have a massive redevelopment plan for that international terminal. We're going to take the things we've learned here, apply them to a much larger volume, which should be nothing but good things for our country.